Hi everyone, my name is Sophie from Colorado State University. This is my presentation from the President's Cup about how one week of time-restricted eating improved cardiometabolic out health outcomes in healthy men and women. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for 32% of all deaths. One person dies every 36 seconds from cardiovascular disease in the United States. That means that during this five minute presentation, approximately eight people have died from cardiovascular disease. Elevated insulin, triglycerides, and blood pressure are a few key markers for cardiovascular disease risk and are impacted by the timing of behaviors like eating, sleeping, and exercising. Recent evidence suggests that the timing of behaviors has a significant impact on cardiometabolic outcomes. For example, the typical person eats throughout the day. The average American eats over a 13-hour window. Later timing of meal intake has been associated with elevated body fat, as well as elevated risk for cardiometabolic diseases. However, time-restricted eating, or TRE, is a circadian-based strategy where caloric intake is permitted only within a defined four to 10 hour window each day. Evidence suggests that time-restricted eating elicits metabolic and cardiovascular benefits without any reduction in caloric intake. For example, in a study that examined men with prediabetes, five weeks of time-restricted eating to a six hour window was shown to improve metabolic and cardiovascular parameters such as blood pressure and insulin sensitivity. The results of the studies were found without any reduction in body weight. However, the mechanisms by which time-restricted eating elicits metabolic and cardiovascular benefits is unknown. Therefore, the purpose of my study was to determine the impact of one week of time-restricted eating on circulating factors and cardiometabolic outcomes in healthy men and women. In our study, we wanted to compare a typical 13-hour eating window to a time-restricted eating window of eight hours. In our two-week study protocol, we examined 13 healthy participants. Eight of the participants were female, five participants were male, all with a healthy BMI. In week one of our study protocol, participants ate over a 13-hour window with meals anchored to habitual wake times, which means that breakfast occurred one hour after waking, lunch occurred six hours after waking, dinner 11 hours after waking, and snack 14 hours after waking. In week two of our study protocol, we asked participants to match meal intake from week one to week two. However, during this week, participants ate over an eight hour window, which means that breakfast was consumed one hour after waking, lunch and snack six hours after waking, and dinner nine hours after waking. In both week one and week two, sleep opportunity was held constant, plus or minus 30 minutes. Participants completed written food diaries and meal photographs, which enabled meal matching from week one to week two. Additionally, participants wore an actograph watch and recorded sleep wake logs, which enabled us to track sleep wake times to anchor her, our meal timing. At the end of week one, participants were admitted to the sleep and metabolism laboratory as shown by the yellow arrow. Hourly blood samples were collected overnight as indicated by the red dashed line. Five minutes after waking in the lab, participants were assessed for resting blood pressure and heart rate as indicated by the orange heart. At the conclusion of week two, after time-restricted eating, participants were admitted back to the sleep and metabolism lab to complete the same assessments as week one. Blood samples were collected using an intravenous line through a port in the wall, which allowed us to draw blood from the adjacent room as to not wake the participants during the sleep opportunity. This graph illustrates changes in insulin over time since wake based on our hourly blood sampling. The blue line indicates typical eating and the orange line indicates time-restricted eating. We found that one week of time-restricted eating to an eight-hour window was shown to significantly reduce area under the curve for insulin. Similarly, we found that one week of time-restricted eating was associated with a significant reduction in area under the curve for triglyceride levels. In a subset of six participants, we assessed resting blood pressure and heart rate after waking in the lab. We found that one week of time-restricted eating did not have a significant change on resting blood pressure or heart rate. In conclusion, acute time-restricted eating may be an effective tool to improving cardiometabolic outcomes such as insulin and triglycerides. 
In our subset of six participants, we did not see any changes in resting blood pressure or heart rate after one week of time-restricted eating. I'd like to thank the NIH for funding this study. I'd like to thank ACSM for allowing me to present my findings. And lastly, I'd like to thank my lab, my lab manager, and my advisor, Dr. Broussard.